spring evening in New York City. In the lobby of a better-class midtown hotel, the desk clerk assumes the painful duty of speaking to a man who stands before the counter. I beg your pardon. Oh. If you want a room, I'm sorry, all filled. No, I'm just looking for someone. A fellow called Johnny O'Clark. Does he live here? Uh, never heard of him. Well, perhaps if I didn't... I'm sorry, I really haven't... Oh. Oh, a police officer. Uh, Mr. O'Clark's in Suite 1415. Thanks. But I doubt if he's up yet. Nine o'clock at night? Well, well, you see, he works very late. He rarely leaves here till the middle of the evening, you might say. I got time. I'll wait for him here in the lobby. Uh, yes, sir. Now then, miss, what can I do for you? Mr. O'Clark, please. May I have his room number? He expecting you? No, but Sorry, I... Sorry, miss. If you wait in the lobby here, I think he'll be down shortly. I wouldn't let you sleep, Johnny, except you said... Hey, are you dressed already? Yeah. What's eating you, Charlie? She called a while ago. Mrs. Marquettis. Wanted to know if this had been delivered. Yeah, this box. Oh, from the jewelers, huh? Yeah. What is it? Well, it's a watch. It's engraved, too. To my darling with unending love. Hmm. Where's the newspaper? That's what she phoned about, the box. To see if you got it. You hear what I said, Johnny? I heard you. Well, uh, when you look at that front page, that trigger-happy cop, that Bladen, always with a gun. That uh, fellow says he shot. Who was he? Oh, Bladen just like the target. I'll see you later, Charlie. I'm going out. Johnny, can I talk to you, please? Oh, well, Harriet. What happened to your cheek? Oh, it's nothing. Oh, nothing that Bladen hasn't done before, huh? Could, could we take a walk, Johnny? Yeah, maybe we'd better. Uh, Mr. O'Clock, there's uh, someone here to see you. No, the desk clerk means me. Koch is my name, Mr. O'Clark. How do you spell it? C O P? <laughs> uh, the lady here. I'll, I'll wait outside, Johnny. No, right, I'll be right out. Well, this has to do with a policeman named Bladen. Chuck Bladen. He's a friend of yours? Everybody's my friend. Yeah, well, Bladen's in trouble. He shouldn't have shot that man. Trouble? A cop in trouble? He won't be one much longer. Chuck Blade never stuck to just being a cop. He liked to cut himself in on all sorts of enterprises. Matter of fact, he's had some dealings with you, hasn't he? Any more questions? No. Just a proposition. In return for certain information... You'll do what? Look, a man named Guido Marquettis runs a gambling house. You're second in command. Well, I'll give you a break. My arms or my legs? Mr. O'Clark, from what I know about you, you're a man who looks at the situation, says what's best for me, and acts accordingly. That's why the answer is no. Johnny, Johnny is it Chuck? Is he in trouble? Do you care? Mr. O'Clark, I'm sorry to see you take this attitude. I'm sorry you're sorry, Mr. Clark. It could be useful to each other. Me to you, not you to me. Well, I'm a real patient man, Mr. O'Clark. I can wait. Why did Bladen hit you, Harriet? Oh, I don't know. His way of telling me off, I suppose. That he threw with me. Then he laughed at me. He said for me to go to you. Oh, Johnny, what should I do? You gotta grow up, kid. You were in love with Bladen, but when the thing's over, it's over. Not for me. I'm not like you. Oh, will you help me, Johnny, will you? Sure, sure. You know I'll help you. Now, come on. Let's get out of the club. You just get here, Johnny? Yeah. Big night, huh, Charlie? Yeah. Hey, you seen Harriet? Some hat check girl. Why can't you get here on time? She's been with me. Oh, uh, he's outside, lady. Yeah? Uh, where? In the alley back of the kitchen. Okay. You want me to go with you? No, I think I can handle it. Hello, Johnny. Hello, you. Hey, you've been reading my mail. No, no, just the evening paper. Two people came to see me about you. Harriet and a guy named Koch. Koch? You're not interested in the first party? Frankly, no. Oh, look, that kid doesn't know whether she's coming or going. All right, tell her she's going. She doesn't fit into my plans anymore. Now, look, Chum. My has been able to keep this place open because he and I have been able to see eye to eye. Right? Go on. That's all. Except now I've served my apprenticeship. Guido Marquettis is taking me in as a full partner. Oh, oh, does he know? Johnny, your boss has been out of town, remember? Yeah, he's due back tonight. I'm waiting for him to show. You know, of course, that Marquettis has a partner. You? Let's say he had a partner. (laughs) 
Do you mind if I laugh in your face? That's the way it's going to be. Want to bet? Look, Johnny, you know me. You get in my way, I'll kill you. You know something, Chuck? What? You took the words right out of my mouth. Hello, Johnny. How's business tonight? Good evening, Mrs. Marquettis. We're doing okay, thank you. Did Charlie give you the box? Yeah, I got the watch. Did you like it? Not enough to keep it. I gave it to you for old times' sake. You're getting it back for old times' sake. Johnny! Oh, hello, Guido. Welcome home. Johnny, I meet Chuck Bladen outside. Come in, Chuck. Come in. Thanks, Guido. Evening, Mrs. McKettis. Hi. I'm glad to see you, Johnny. Glad you're back, Guido. How was the trip? Oh, that's a fine place, Mexico. I buy lots of nice things, Johnny. What do you say, McKettis? It's getting late. Honey, I got a little business and... Uh, no, wait. First, I want to show them what you give me for welcome home present. Look, boys. A watch. Special made for me. Hey, that's some watch, Guido. Must have cost plenty. How do you like it, Johnny? Why, it's beautiful. Shows where I stand with Nell, huh? You're a lucky man, Guido. What do you think, Nell? I think I'm thirsty. I'll be at the bar. Johnny, Chuck says he's got business with me. You in on this? No, he's not in on it. It's all right if he sits around and listens? No, it's not all right. Guido, let me tip you off on this guy. Go ahead. Unload him. I'll see you around, Chuck. Sure, Johnny. I'll see you around. Johnny, come on, sit down. Have a drink. Well, that was a nice trick. What was in your mind, now? You give your husband the same kind of watch you give me. It's like buying us both arsenic. Oh, I didn't think about it when I bought it. I, I had to give you something. Who said you had to? Here's my watch. Take it. You know, I never take anything back. I said take it. And I said no. Yes, Mrs. Martell? Give me a pencil, Harriet, and a piece of paper. Johnny, did you see him? Did you see Chuck? Yeah, yeah, I saw him. What did he say? So this box, Harriet, to see that Mrs. Marquettis gets it, will you? And the note goes with it. Johnny, I asked you about Chuck. Well, he said he talked to you himself. Johnny, tell me. Okay. Okay. You're through with him. You mean he's through with me? You want my advice? No. Well, then don't ask for it. Oh, what were you going to say? Harriet. Don't see him anymore, not even tonight. He's no good for you or anybody else. Now, that box, don't forget. Give it to Mrs. Marquette. You remember me, Mr. O'Clock? Koch. I took the liberty of waiting for you here in the suite with Charlie. Come in. Thanks. What happened to you, Charlie? Oh, your man and I had a little argument. You keep bad company, Mr. O'Clark. Uh, he stuck his foot in the door, Johnny. Looks more like he stuck it in your eye. Coppers, always with the strong arm stuff. Uh, you better wait inside, Charlie. Yeah. Well, it's four o'clock in the morning, Mr. Koch. So if you don't mind, speak your piece. Early tonight, your blind date. What about her? Her name was Harriet Hobson. What do you mean, was? She's dead. Come again? Committed suicide a little while ago. Gas. I was going to her apartment on another matter. That's how I happened to find her. Suicide? When did you see her last? Oh, leave me alone. Your grief is very convincing, Mr. O'Clock. Get out of here before I knock your brains in. Can you think of any reason why you should do a terrible thing like that? I can think of a couple. Could Jack Bladen be one of the reasons? Hasn't reported to his precinct. He's disappeared. Did you look in the gutter? No. Well, I got a lot of work ahead of me. Investigating a suicide? I'm looking for Bladen. Oh. Sure, you don't know where he is. Look, friend, you can shove Charlie around, but not me. I once got a ticket for passing a light, and that's all that's on my record. Yeah. Well, according to the law, that young girl's body has to be identified. Any relatives? She had a sister. Harriet said she was on the road somewhere. Nancy Hobson, an actress. You can check with actors' equity. They ought to know. Yeah. Say, if you run into Bladen, you'll let me know, won't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'll let you know. Good night, Mr. O'Clock. Good night, Mr. Koch. Hey, Charlie. Uh, Flatfoot. Look, when we closed up tonight, I stayed in the office about an hour. Where did you go, Charlie? Out. Was that all right? 
Did you see Harriet before you left? No. What time did Bladen leave? Well, I can find out, maybe. Ah, uh, skip it. I'll find out myself. You keep bad company, Mr. O'Clock. You can shove Charlie around, but not me. Shut up. You know the way I meant it. No, no, tell me. If I have to tell you, it's no good. Well, maybe it ain't. Oh, no, don't get your dander up, Charlie. You better put some beef on that eye. Philly Mignon. Story, Miss Hobson. I'm glad I was able to get hold of you as fast as I did. You must have taken a plane, huh? Yeah. Well, I would have met you at the airport, but I figured I'd better stay here in your sister's apartment. Why? Why did she do it? This box, Miss Hobson, it was in her bag. There's a watch in it. Look. My darling. Without ending love. And this note. See what it says. I'm returning the watch. No sale. Laden wrote that, didn't he? It's possible. When did you see your sister last? About for months. You wrote to each other. She mentioned Bladen? She said that she was going with him. She ever mentioned any other man? What? Johnny O'Clock? Yeah. What did she write about him? Oh, he helped her get a job. He was very good to her. This man Bladen, who is he? Mm hmm. Well, you might ask Johnny O'Clock. Do you mind if I hold on to this watch for a while in the note? No, I, I don't mind. Where can I get in touch with you? I don't know. Here, I guess. Here? A room's a room. You're all right, Miss Hobson. Yeah. Hard as nails. Now get out of here and let me cry by myself. So, man said you wanted to see me. You're Mr. O'Clock? That's right. Well, you're her sister, huh? Harriet's sister. They didn't want to let me in that place. Well, we, we try to know the clientele. Besides, it's rather early. I I won't take up your time, but I just wanted to thank you. For what? For being nice to Harriet. She was a nice kid. What do you want to know about your sister? Anything. What she did. What she said. Who she saw. Oh, what's the use of digging your brains out? You would, too, if you thought about her the way I did. If you knew that part of what happened was your own fault. She was old enough to know what she was doing. Old enough, maybe. But not smart enough. I knew that when I left her. Do you know who I was? Nancy Hobson. On the road to fame and fortune. Out of the way, everybody. I made it, too. Fourth from the left in a traveling girl show. You can tell that fellow to stop playing the piano now. Bed to marry. Hey, you with the hands. Go home. Now, tell me where I can find Chuck Bladen. Why me? A detective named Cox thought you might know. And if you found Bladen? I'd cut his heart out. Oh, now, look. These things happen. A girl falls to My the sister's dead. It didn't have to finish the way this did. Close the books, Miss Hobson. She was a nice kid. Let it go at that. The words don't go with the music. Goodbye, Mr. O'Clock. Oh, wait a minute. How long are you going to be around? I'm leaving by plane tonight. Oh. Well, see you sometime. Yeah. I'll see you sometime. <laughs> It's an hour later, but a sudden storm has grounded all planes, and Nancy Hobson has returned to the city from the airport. At home in another part of town, Guido Marquettas and his handsome wife entertain a visitor. How do you like these, huh, Turk? All these beautiful things I find in Mexico. You sure like beautiful things around here, Guido? What else is money for, I ask you. Now look, how's this? A painting in oil paint. Well, that's you, isn't it? <laughs> now look. Me. A painting of me. It's oil paint, all right. A kid in Mexico City painted this. A kid no more than about 16. He says, I have an interesting face. A kid painting a picture like this. What do you think, sir? How much it costs you? What's the difference? It's good, huh, Neil? How do you like it, huh? Looks like you. <laughs> Johnny! Hey, come in, Johnny. Thanks. Hello, Neil, boss. How are you, Turk? Fine, Johnny. Turk is in town for a big game of poker. You gonna play, Johnny? I never gamble. Johnny. Look, 
They saw a painting. A kid in Mexico painted. A young kid. No more than about 16. Yeah, that's right. He sees me in the hotel and he says... He has such an interesting face. <laughs> How do you like it? It looks like you. <laughs> you two have been rehearsing. What's on your mind, Johnny? He, uh... He came to see me. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What, uh, what goes, Nell? You told me you'd be alone. <laughs> All the time, Johnny. Kid. <laughs> Johnny, I hear you've been looking for Chuck Bladen. You hear right, Leo. He gave that head check girl a bad deal. I'm taking your advice, Johnny. I'm unloading Bladen. Good, good. How long are you going to be in town, Turk? Long as the poker game lasts. Me and Turk been talking over old times, Johnny. I've been telling him how many years you and me been together. All the things we've been through. Remember, Johnny? Yeah, I remember. That's why I know I'll never have to worry about you. <laughs> Nell, <coughs> what's the matter? I choked on a piece of scotch. Hand me another glass, Guido, darling. Here. And don't drop this one. I always drop glasses, Turk, when I've had too much to drink. I drop a lot of glasses, mister. If you boys will excuse me, I'll go out on the balcony and get some air. Wait a minute, Nell. Close the door. We shouldn't leave our guests by themselves, Guido. I don't like for you to act that way in front of people. You've got a way out, darling. When I want it, not you. Do you ever let anything go? When I'm through with it. <laughs> Stop it. That's all right. They'll hear me laughing. Figure you said something funny. You did. Now they're looking at us, Turk and Johnny. And give me a kiss. It'll make you look good in front of people. Get back inside. It's getting kind of late. If we're going to the fight, Turk, we better get going. Anytime you're ready, Guido. Oh, uh, Johnny, do me a favor, will you? No. Maybe you take her out somewhere, show her a good time. You do this for me, huh? What about the club? Oh, for a few hours, you can get along without you. Okay, Guido, it's as good as done. Thanks, Johnny. Let's go, poker player. You did come to see me, didn't you, Johnny? Oh, sure, sure. Couldn't stay away from you. You know why he left us here, don't you? You afraid of him? You heard him mention what we'd been through. He'd be the first to stick a knife in your back, Johnny, baby. That's yeah, there already. I can feel the blood sticking to my shirt. There's something going on I don't know about. And what I don't know, I don't like. You can help me. How? Find out what Bladen and Guido talked about last night. Find out where Bladen is. And if I do? Ooh, I'll owe you a favor. Get out! Okay, okay. I was never here. No, no, Johnny. Wait. So I... So I threw off the handle. Look, Mel, we don't have to kid each other. I never kidded you. Not until you met my kettis. I told you the way it was. You didn't have to tell me. What did you expect me to do? Exactly what you did. Marry my kettis for what you could get out of it. It wasn't enough. You dealt it, honey. Things changed. Oh, stop playing us off against each other, Mel. It won't work. What are you going to do about it? Play it safe like you always do. That's right, Mel. That's right. I'll, I'll play it safe. That's why you got the watch back. I got what back? The watch. Stop it. I never got it back. Well, I gave it to Harriet, the kid in the check room. She was... I never got the watch back, Johnny. Does that mean you have to leave? Yeah. I better find that watch. It probably needs winding. <laughs> They're rough, Mr. O'Clock. Well, I, uh, I wasn't taking any chance. I, well, I thought you were on your way. Who were you expecting to find in my sister's apartment? Uh, nobody, but uh, when I heard a noise, uh, somehow I thought of Chuck Flayton. I hate to be inquisitive, but why did you come here? Well, I, uh, I was looking for something, something I'd uh, loan Bladen. What made you think it would be here? Uh, you... You better have a cigarette. You're still shaking. I've got to get back to the airport. I've got a car. I'll get you there. How did my sister meet Bladen? I introduced her to him. Now what are you doing? Uh, hey, what's this? 
That old air between the sofa cushions. Looks like a 50 cent piece. Yeah, yeah, it's a coin, all right. It's a Mexican coin. Brand new one. Now will you drive me to the airport? If I stay here, here another minute, I'll, I'll bust wide open again. Oh, it's you, the detective. Hmm? Oh, yes, ma'am. I'm down the hall, remember? Uh, can't you get the door open? I think I've got the door open. Uh, now what are you going to do? Uh, look, lady, I'll I... never forget as long as I live. Her lying there on the floor, gas all over the place. You mind very much if I work alone for a while? You ain't the only one who's been here. Her sister just been here, and a man. I know. I know. I was waiting for them to leave. Newspaper just come. You know what it said in the newspaper? That poor girl had poison in her stomach. What does that mean? It means you're a very nosy woman. Now, will you please get out of here? All right, I'll go. Handle it all by yourself, lady. Hello. Hello, give me homicide. Johnson? Koch. I've gone through the girl's apartment again. I want you to pick up... What? When? What time? Okay, I'll be right over. Storm like this, Nancy. I doubt if anything's going to get off the ground for a while. So the flight just told me. Oh, cool. Attention all passengers. All flights have been canceled. Please check with your airline. Well, I guess they mean it. No point standing here in the entrance. Come on, let's get in the car. You want me to stick around? If you want to. Well, send me some questions. Personal? The only kind I ever asked. Got a guy? Had a guy. Split up? He was killed. Accident? Yeah. The war. Oh. Well, that's enough out of me. How about you? Who do you want to know about me? What do you want to tell me? What I want you to know. Oh, you're cagey. Does that go with being a gambler? Well, I'm not a gambler. Gambler's a guy who takes a chance. You never do? Oh, took a few, took a few. Never take a chance, you never know. What do you know? You always lose. Learned that when I was a kid. What were you like when you were a kid? Cute. Oh, you like. <laughs> Skinny. Mm, you feel out nice. <laughs> what time is it? Oh, it's still uh, still early. You hungry? I could eat. Well, then let's get back to town. Where do you live? Yeah. Charlie. Charlie. Oh, I guess he's gone to the club. Who's Charlie? My man. You say that like you're used to it. Oh, Charlie's a guy who just got out of the jug. I give him a place to live. Charlie's grateful. Can I get you anything? No, I just want to sit. Oh, it's nice here. Very nice. Oh, have some music. Music goes with rain. And the fireplace. Well, the fireplace is a fake. Everything is a fake. I don't think you are. If you never take a chance, you never know. Hey. Things stick in your head. Oh, it's dark. Seems like such a long time since I closed my eyes. I can go to the club for a couple of hours. Why don't you take a nap? No, don't go away. Stay here and talk to me. Tell me things. Sweet and pretty things. And I'll close my eyes and make believe they're true. Johnny, you shouldn't have kept me. Look. Can I tell you why? No, no. What are you trying to prove? That you're a great boy with a lady? And who are you trying to prove it to? To me or to yourself? Answer me. You know all the answers. I like you, Johnny. If that's what you want to know. Put that in writing and I'll paste it in my scrapbook. I mean it. That's why... Why, Oh, you're a strange kid. I'm a mixed-up kid. I guess you'd better go to the club. Yeah, I suppose so. Why don't you come with me? In these clothes? Johnny O'Clock and his rag doll. Look, the rain stopped. I guess the planes will be taken off. They'll be taking off tomorrow and the day after. I like you very much, Johnny. Like? That's just a word. Then let's be clear about it. Let's make the words mean what they say. If it's going to be for laughs, okay. Only, I want to be in on the joke from the start. Hey, you speak your mind. All the time. Do you? 
I want you to stick around. Thanks, John. Good evening, Mr. O'Clock. Sorry, no mail. Oh, I want to get a room for Miss Nancy Hobson. Well, we're pretty short these days. You were... Uh... Oh... Oh, thank you very much, Mr. O'Clock. I uh, think we can find a room for Miss Hobson. You'll be down to Redstone in a little while, and uh, send us some flowers, will you? And oh, yeah, but... Oh. Not waiting for me, are you, Inspector? Hello, Mr. O'Clock. Can I talk to you? About Bladen? I don't know where Bladen is. Miss Hobson didn't leave, huh? Well, if she did, you wouldn't know where to find her. We found Bladen. He's dead. Where? In the river. I guess we got a date, Mr. O'Clark. You and me at headquarters. Johnny O'Clock's trip to Marquetta's gambling club has taken a sudden detour to police headquarters. In Koch's office, the inspector hands in a freshly typed document. You can look at this if you want to. Statement just got from your friend, Charlie. Oh, I don't have to read it. Charlie didn't say anything. He wants to did time rather than talk. <laughs> Honor among thieves, eh? Oh, you were right about your record. There's nothing on it. Says you were in the army. Yeah, I did four years. Yeah. What did you learn? Well, I knew before I got in. Who killed Bladen? I don't know. How did you first meet him? Who? Bladen. How do you meet a cop? One like him? Any cop. It says in that book that a confession obtained by so called third degree methods is not admissible in court. It's nice to know you can read. Mark Kitty is here, Inspector. Send him in. Hello, Johnny. Kilo? Coach. Mr. Marquettis. I got word of the fight. How were they? Oh, they stunk. You want to see me? Yeah. What's the rumble? Bladen. Yeah, I heard. Good news travels fast. You know, it's my opinion both of you had reasons to kill Bladen. It's my opinion you're whistling through your teeth. Let him whistle, Guido. Well, I think you had more reason than he did. Now, if you're going to put it that way, from here on in, I make with a lawyer. <laughs> Who made any charge? I just hope to discuss it, frankly and openly. Okay, discuss. Your deal, Mr. Koch. Revenge, profit, jealousy. Those are the three most important motives for murder. Check revenge for you, Marquettis. Maybe profit. For you, Johnny, check all three. Mm, three strikes, I'm out. I've yet to hear a man make a joke in the electric chair. Now, let's examine the relationship between you two gentlemen. You're in business together. Marquettis the muscle, O'Clock the brain. No offense, Marquettis, but <laughs> in my opinion, Johnny, you're being exploited. I do all right. Yeah? Well, I'm glad you're satisfied, because in a situation like this, it's essential you trust each other, isn't it? Well, up until now, while you've gotten away with many things, it's always been a little dangerous. And suddenly, a bright idea occurs to... to who? Which one of you? You said you'd tell us. Oh, it doesn't make any difference. Hire a legal killer. Hire Bladen. Take a cop who earns a couple of hundred a month and corrupt him. I've got the newspaper clippings in my file. They all read alike. Gambler shot for resisting arrest. That's a lie. The truth, gambler shot for opening up when he was told not to. Who's your witness for all this? Bladen? He would have been a witness if he hadn't been murdered. Harriet Hobson would have been a witness if she hadn't been murdered. Come again? She was murdered the same night Bladen was. Done very well, too. The door locked, the key left on the inside... <laughs> A trick used by old hotel thieves. Bladen called for her at the club every night, didn't he? I don't know. Well, I saw him with her the night it happened. This was in her purse when I found her. Watch and a note. This your handwriting a clock? Let me see that watch. There. Yeah, that's my handwriting. Did she give you the watch? A nice piece of jewelry. Yeah, she gave me the watch. Cost a lot of dough. Watch like that has to be special made. There was bad blood between you and Bladen O'Clock on account of this girl. Besides, you wanted to cut you out with Marquettis. At least that's 
my opinion. Me, I have no opinion. You can go. No, not you, Johnny. Just Marquettes. See you later, Johnny. Now maybe you have something to say to me. Spider-Man, spinning web. Oh, I feel sorry for you. Yeah, yeah, you got tears in your eyes. I offered your way out. All you had to say when I showed the watch was just what I said. When I first met you, I thought maybe you had some human feelings. A girl's been murdered. I know that. I see now I was wrong. You're a hoodlum, a cop hater. I should have treated you like one. <laughs> Smart boy. You're all alike. Stupid. Stupid. Stupid? How much money have you got? How much time have you got to live? Back already, Johnny? I've just been taking a walk. Yeah, the desk clerk told me. I called about your plane. It leaves in half an hour. Well, just like that. Yeah, just like that. Come on, I'll drive to the airport. Never mind. I'll walk. I said I'd drive you. Charlie. Yeah? Go on up to the room. I'll be back in an hour. Is that you, Guido? Hello, Nell. You didn't go out with Johnny, huh? No, I... Guido, take me out. Please, take me someplace. I can't. Turk and the boys, they're waiting at the club. I just come to say goodbye to you. Goodbye? You know, I've been showing this off all day. This wonderful watch, perfectly made. There's only two of this kind of watch around. Mine and who else? Get out Get out I ought to kill you. This is Guido Marchetti saying it's your husband, the Greek ball. That's what you thought all the time, didn't you? Take him. He don't count. Give me a better reason like that. Go on, say it. O'clock, o'clock, o'clock. All the time he keeps sticking in my brain. I don't know. There's never been anyone between us ever since. Ever since all the time. Tell Johnny to come up here then. Ask him. I just get a telephone call now. From a guy named Charlie. Johnny's dead. Some guys just knocked him off. You're lying. When? When? At exactly 11.30 by this watch you gave me. See? The watch says 12 minutes after 11. At exactly 11.30 by this watch. Hello? Hello, police? Uh, this is Mike's service station near the airport. Somebody just tried to murder somebody. Huh? Uh, well, this car, see, it comes by this other car 60 miles an hour and fills it full of holes. Huh? Uh, I don't know. The car went in a ditch, but they ran out. A man and a girl. Uh, nobody knows. No, no, they just ran away. Johnny, wait. Wait. Please. There's the airport over there. Get out of here and get on your plane. This is why you wanted me to go. Those men in that car. You're crazy. You knew they were looking for you. I didn't know a thing. Don't lie to me now. Oh, look. You've known me for less than a day. Make out you never met me. Make out this week only had six days in it. Johnny, listen. Only once before was it everything with me. The beginning, the end. Day and night. I never thought it could happen again. But it has, Johnny, and I'm not going to lose it. Will you get on that plane? No. Oh, Nancy, with me it's trouble and grief and capital letters. If you've some place to go, go. There's no place to go, Johnny. No place. Only with you. Who is it? Nancy Hobson, Charlie. It's about Johnny. Let me in, please. What about Johnny? He's hurt. He's hurt bad. He needs a doctor. Where is he? I'll take you there. Wait a minute. So what do you mean he's... The body's still warm, Charlie. You couldn't wait, could you? Johnny, I... Marquettes, wasn't it? I said it was Marquettes, wasn't it? Johnny, stop it! Shut up. What you think of me, Charlie? Why shouldn't I? Johnny will clock with the girls, and Johnny will clock with the clothes. I got you out of the jug. Yeah, here, Charlie. Here's a phone. Here's a bed. Keep it straight. A cop comes in. Who gets pushed around? Charlie. Where's Johnny will clock where he always is? Looking out for himself. Well, now you're dead, Johnny. Lay down. You and me both. Now I'll tell you why you did it. You were at the club last night after it folded. That's when Bladen got it. I had nothing to do with it, though. You knew about it. That was enough. Oh. You had to stick with Mark Kellis or he was back at the river. I'm a two-time loser, Johnny. This time would have been for keeps. You couldn't have stopped it. Then you were there. Not when the girl was murdered. I didn't see nothing when the girl was murdered. When who was murdered? Come on, Nancy. Let's get out of here. Sick. I feel sick. 
Central Park. The big green bed of a big-hearted town. On a hot night, anybody can sleep on the grass. Johnny, who killed her? Marquettis, I think. Then tell the police. Marquettis and I were partners. If Cox didn't sink me, he would. What happens to Marquettis? He'll get paid off when the time comes. When the time comes? First, I'll go settle up with him. He owes me money. You'd go back for that? What do you think we're going to do? Ride freight cars, live in furnished rooms? We're going to have everything. Except a conscience. All right, then you tell me. What do I do? Nothing. I don't want you to do anything. Play hero for you, dead hero? Not for me. Don't do anything for me. Well, don't you think I want to pay him off? But I'll pick the spot and I'll pick the time and I'll get away with it. All my life I've operated that way and all the time I've won. What have you won? Whatever I've wanted. I'm no fool. No. You're no fool. You're smart. Stop it. My sister's been murdered, but Johnny O'Clock's no fool. Stop it. Oh, shut it. They'll all wake up. Even my sister. Johnny O'Clock's no fool. Stop it. <laughs> Had to be you. Nobody in the whole world for me but but Johnny O'Clock. That's right, baby. Nobody else for me. Now let's get going. It looks like I'll have to interrupt the poker game. Johnny, no. Please. It's my door, baby. And I'm going to get it. All alone in a cab, Miss Hobson. Mr. Cox. Johnny just went into the club, huh? Eh? Oh, you were at the airport before. What happened? Why did he go in there just now? Oh. Johnny O'Clock's girl. Just full of answers. Right at the ground. Hello, Guido. Oh, hello, Johnny. Nell, Johnny. Hey, where did Nell go? You send her in the kitchen for some more coffee, remember? Oh. She'll be back, Johnny. Want a hand? Uh, you know, I, I never gamble, Turk. Maybe you want to see me about something. Yeah, Guido, I want to see you. Inside here. Do me out, boys. Who told me? Why lock the door? So we can be alone. Then what about the other door? I'm leaving through that door. I may be in a hurry. What's on your mind? Money, Guido. My cut. There's the safe. Well, this, uh, this is going to make us about even, Guido. You want to count it? I take your word. You going away? Yeah, yeah, far. Well, this is it, Guido. Now we're quits. Can I come in, or, or is this a private farewell? Well, come in now. Now close that door. Guido, no. Johnny's got a gun. If Johnny would turn around, he would see for himself. What do you want to shoot? My wife. Nell, tell him. Yeah, tell me. He won't come back, Guido. You'll go after him. No, it's over. In your eyes. I can see it ain't over. Ever since he first walked in, I've seen it in your eyes. Oh, this is just what Koch wanted, and you like a sucker fall for it. Koch was right. Yeah, about a lot of things. You will never know. I know. You gave it to Bladen. Ask him when you see him. And then to the kid, Harriet. She was waiting for Bladen. She was there when it happened. Who are you talking to? The walls? To you, Guido. You took her home, made it look like suicide. Hotel thieves trick. Who did Koch mean, Guido? And then you left your calling card. I found it. A brand new Mexican coin. The dying man makes a statement. Get out of here now. No, Guido. Let him go. I promise. You I killed swear. that kid, Guido. You had to. And now you have to kill me. Except there was something else in that safe, Guido. This. Get away from me. Listen. Oh. You made it, didn't you, Nell? You finally got what you wanted. When they come, the police. I said, get away from me. I'll tell them how it happened. They won't hold you. It can all be ours now, Johnny. Yours and mine. It's yours. You can have it. Johnny, if you walk out on me now, I swear I'll tell them. I know what you'll tell them. Now get away from that door before I give it to you. I shut anyway. Give me the police. So sharpen up, Mrs. Marquettis. Inspector Koch. I was just phoning the police. 
Who did it? Johnny O'Clock. He tried to hold up my husband. He shot him down in cold blood. Cover the alley, Mac. Phillips, watch the fire escapes. One of you men take Mrs. Mark Kettis. Johnny. Johnny. Nancy. Nancy, I told you to wait in the cab. I heard the shots. I've been trying to find you. Oh, well, have a chair. Mark Kettis' private office. Johnny, you're... I'm alive. This bag, take it. It's full of money. Take it and run, you little fool. I've just killed Marquettis. You said that... I know what I said. I'd pick the time and the spot. Big joke. It's my word against hers. Who? I know what I know. Trouble and grief, Johnny. You said that yourself. I said okay. I meant what I said. Now i got to prove it to you. I don't care what you do or where you Will go. you run? I can't. I can't leave you now. Quiet. Quiet. Turn out the light. Don't bother to raise your hands, Koch. Just keep them at your side. You're out of your mind, Johnny. That's right. Crazy. Crazy smart. Put down that gun. And I tell you what you're going to do, Koch. You're going to walk me out of here past everybody. And if they stop us, you'll tell them I gave myself up. You've arrested me. You think I'd say that? Listen to me. I've got a bullet in my stomach and fire in my brain. It wouldn't take much for me to let you have it right now. Johnny, you don't know what you're saying. All I know is in this gun. All I know is i got to bring you in. Start walking, Koch. I'm right in back of you. When we get to the door downstairs, I'll tell them to shoot. All right, so they'll shoot. No, it's not all right. Not for me, it isn't, Johnny. Please, give yourself up. I haven't got a chance, Nancy. All my life, cops have been chasing me, even if I told him the truth. What is the truth? It was self-defense. This white said you shot him in cold blood for money. It's a lie. If it's a lie, it'll come out. In storybooks, this is too good a frame. Nobody's out to frame you, Johnny. If you want him alive, Miss Hobson, tell him to drop that gun. No. I don't want him alive. I want him dead. I want to cry for him. I haven't had enough tears. I want more. I want to be able to say, do you know who I was crying for? Johnny O'Clock. You know who he was? The smartest man in the world. I know because he told me so. Johnny O'Clock's no fool, he said. No fool. That's why he's dead, because he's no fool. Oh, Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> Will that gun slip out of your hands, Johnny? Or did you drop it? You'll never really know, will you, Koch? I think I know. Well, Johnny, come on, baby. Well, Koch, looks like it's going to be a hot day. No, not too hot. Want to bet? Bet? <laughs> Even on my salary, Johnny, I lay your odds.